<laughs> I have a confession to make as well, Sorry. Right. This is my first ever interview. I've never interviewed. Oh, first interview. I thought you were going to say interview while playing no, a game. No, first ever interview ever. First never interview? Oh, okay, that's true. Okay. It's not even an interview. This is just a conversation between us. Okay. While you get beat at Mario, basically. <laughs> Are you picking Toad? Do you want to be Toad? No, no, no. Do they have DK? Oh, I'm just gonna be DK. Yeah, yeah. How do you go? I'm gonna win. A. A. What map? I know you like Rainbow Road, so. I'm oh, the, come on! You're gonna start on the hardest one. Oh, this is good. We didn't even pick it. All right, cool. We can go. What other games did you used to play? What other games? Um. Do you remember? Oh, this is so hard. <laughs> you can't multitask. <laughs> What games did I play? I had, a, I had a Spyro. Do you yeah. remember Spyro? And there was a Michael Jackson game. Uh, Moonwalker. You had to I like, think so. You had to save the kids from the evil guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, that's, what that's what it was. That's what it was. all of his like, <laughs> attack moves were dance moves, so he'd like, kick yes. his leg out. Yes. Um, Where am I? You're ape. You're but I'm literally not moving. Why? You're against the wall. Oh, you. there I am. Okay. I would totally be beating you right now. Well, if well, we I mean, had other it's only seven and eight. I just think you're We're both eight. doing horribly. Because you were doing all of the TV shows and stuff when you were younger. <laughs> and you were signed yeah. at such a young age. Do you yeah. feel like you kind of missed this part of your childhood? No, not at all. I was such a normal kid. Yeah, I still am a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Get away, princess. Peach. I have to oh, wait Bowser. You finish now. Oh, I'm doing the Wii version. <laughs> <You can manage. laughs> when you was growing up, uh -huh. I feel like there must have been a lot of rejection in terms of the American Idol stuff and then oh, yeah. splitting from the label and yes. doing your own stuff. How do you react to that kind of rejection at such a young age? Uh, that's when I found songwriting. You go, you go in your room and you lock yourself in there and you write songs <laughs> about how you feel. Now there's a lot of pressure on you to actually deliver and right. perform. How do you keep like a childlike enthusiasm about everything? Oh, I like that. I, I try to. Um, I think just by having good people around you too helps, like good friends, solid people who treat you the same. Yeah. They can't treat you like now you're different because you have an album out. So that's that's a big one for me. Is they'll my friends will like slap me around if I change. <laughs> Do you have a lot of friends outside of music? Oh, for sure. Yeah. They. I mean, they get the music world. Oh, we're starting again. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to. Sorry, I can't talk right now. Right. <laughs> they get the music world, which is nice. Yeah. But um, but they're also they're so like chill. So they keep you grounded. For sure. Yeah. My family and my friends. I saw that you had Day Jack on. Uh, One of your songs. Daye. Is Daye. it Daye? Yep. Okay, cool. That's okay. I Almost. was oh, I died. super surprised because I thought I was the only person who knew how sick he was. Oh, cool. Because he's so him. new and he only he has such few things he's, out. Yeah, yeah, he's like a SoundCloud dude. Yeah. How did that come about? I ran into him at the studio and I just, I'm, I got introduced to him. He's super young. He's only like... 18, 19, I think. Yeah, and he's just like an NYU student. We met and I looked him up just out of curiosity. You know, I thought he was really cool and we we needed a feature on Expensive. And I was like, what about like that Dahye kid? He's really dope. He doesn't have this huge name yet, which yeah. I think is, is cool. He's just really talented. What is that egg thing? Uh, don't crash into it because I think it like crushes your lips really small. Oh, I've had that star thing the whole time. Woo. <laughs> I'm killing it now. I wish we had the music. Yeah. The mu it's like my jam. You just went past me and backwards. Dang it! I listened to a, a lot of Tori Kelly over the last week. Um, a lot okay. of songs are written from the perspective of a girl who seems to always lose at love. Oh. There's yeah, some heartbreak. Is the heartbreak in a short amount of sincere. time. For sure, yeah. I mean, it, with those songs, it was. This is really funny to have a deep conversation while playing Mario Kart. 
Um, with, with a lot of my songs, it's it's not necessarily from like a relationship necessarily, but oh, I keep falling off this stupid clip. The heartbreak can come from uh, the industry as well. I wrote a lot about that on my album, and just different people that um, that I was hurt by, I guess. But it was very therapeutic to write about it because I felt like I kind of, I finally was like letting go with this album. I was finally addressing a lot mm. of things. I'm heartbroken right now though that I'm losing. Maybe you can write songs. So right. should definitely. And you'll know what it's about. And everyone's racing past. Only yeah. we, we will know. Everyone's, everyone's racing past. Everyone's yeah, racing there's a lot past of, you. There's a lot of deep uh, life lessons in Mario yeah, Kart. I'm exactly. Just you touch on loneliness too. And obviously the industry can be extremely lonely place right. sometimes. There we go. And dear no one as well. Are you afraid that you might end up alone? <laughs> I don't know why I laughed. That was really mean. <laughs> it was just so like straightforward. Um, the whole the whole point of that song is to be okay with being alone. I think. And um, when I wrote it, I I was just in a place where I was kind of noticing a lot of couples around me. I hate this level. I was noticing a lot of people around me, and, and I think that I, I was just finally in a place where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm cool to like wait for the right person. I'm willing to you know, be alone right now because maybe I'm supposed to learn something from it. If you do end up alone, what are you gonna do if a zombie apocalypse happens? Play Mario Kart till I die so that I can beat you. <laughs> this looks so bad. Like I've been claiming to be so good at Mario Kart. We can put something else there and make it look like you were really good this whole time. This is awful. I'm not living up to what I've no. been saying. No. Why did you think Ed Sheeran took you under his wing? I think Ed is, uh, he kind of has similar styles. We, we kind of have similar styles as far as like, just standing up there with your guitar. I think he's always stayed true to himself, you know, through everything. He kind of started from the ground up. Mm -hmm. He really believes in, you know, sticking to to your gut, but also like working hard for it. You know, he's he's like one of the hardest working people that I've met. He's one of the best rappers that I've actually Oh, that too. Heard, right? Yeah. It's he can impersonate like any rapper. It's, it's so crazy. good how much of a good rapper he is. Like, it's actually crazy. And <laughs> you as well. Me? You are the slyest rapper. I've the ever slyest met rapper. In my life. I sneak it in there. But yeah, sometimes. every now and yeah. then I'll listen to a song and then you'll spit a quick 16 <laughs> like it's nothing. <laughs> I sing rap though, that's how, no, you, that's how yeah, I, I sneak heard, it I in heard there. You rap. I and then when I was going through your list of top five rappers, I yeah. was so shocked. The first Why? two people you said was Kendrick, J. Cole, and I was like, okay, cool. Uh, Drake now, ASAP Rocky, and then you were like, Carmen, and I was like, yeah. Really? Common, then you were like, Lecrae, and I was in like, there. what? And then you said Q Tip. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I paused the video, I was like, hang on, what does Tori know about Q Tip the Abstract? And yes. Tribe Called Quit. I was so impressed and very, very Thanks. shocked actually. It's good. Do we have like oh. another? Do we have to wrap it up? Right no, now? we need to play like ten more games of this. Yes. Yes. Sorry. That's and a lot of those guys that you mentioned, like Cray Q Tip, they're yeah. very authentic. Oh yeah. Like authentic rappers. They're not gassing about the stuff. They're talking about some real stuff. How yeah. how important is authenticity to you in life and in music? It's a huge part of, of everything I do. I think it's important just to be real and not mask anything. Because at the end of the day, people can relate more to to you if you're just like transparent and you're telling your, your real story rather than putting something out there that's like a gimmick. Was there ever a time when you thought, maybe I will have to fake it. Maybe putting myself out there completely is not the greatest thing. Yeah, I, I definitely um, struggled with that before when I was just kind of figuring out my sound and confused as to why, um, you know, nothing was really happening. And I just, it kind of crossed my mind, but I'm so happy that I ended up not going that route. You know, I think, I think it's easy to look at what other people are doing and and kind of feel like, oh, maybe I should do that, or maybe I should look like that, or dress like that, or sound like that, but um, but I'm just, I'm happy. Whatever, I mean, whatever process it, it took, I'm glad yeah. that even even if it took a lot longer. Do you think I that's why your fan base is so... So rad? Do you think that's because <laughs> they've, been, they've seen you at your low, and now they're really appreciating you at your high? Because yeah, well, you've I never, think... you haven't tried to fluff it up. Right, I think they've, they've seen, they've gotten to see 
me through the whole journey and they feel like they're a part of that. Like we're all kind of going through it together mm. and growing up together. So I think it's kind of a unique situation where we, we just, we have a really cool relationship, I think. And what does it feel like, not to be terrible at Mario Kart, but to have a number one album? <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be a pro You'd Mario Karter. <laughs> no, I, um, it, feels, it feels pretty surreal, actually. I couldn't even get past the fact that I was putting out an album. So the fact that it, it you know, debuted so well was, was more than I could dream of. It comes out very soon, I think, out here. Nice plug. Like October 16th, actually, yeah. Okay. I think that's exactly when it comes out. Oh, you have an album coming <laughs> out here, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what uh, would a billboard topping <laughs> Sorry. 22 year old Tori Kelly say to a 12 year old Tori Kelly who mm. just parted ways from Geffen Records? I'm really imagining it. I would say to hold on a little longer and it's not your time yet. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Um, just be patient because it's because you're not you're not ready yet, and that's okay. You still got some things to figure out, and you got some growing up to do. That's what I would, that's what I would tell a little baby Tori. <laughs> we need to figure out how to make you better. <sighs> Maybe I should, do they have lessons? Do they have Mario, Mario Kart lessons? Uh, Sign me up, because I'm really sad now. Get a Nintendo DS, take it on the road. Yes, yes, tour bus. Yes. Tour bus life, I need to do that, yeah. And uh, maybe next time that you're here. I'll be better. We can try this again. Yeah. No, I don't like you, I just thought you were cool enough to kick it. Got a beach house I can sell you in Idaho. Since I don't love you, I just thought you were cute. Good stuff. You could do different editions. Yeah, make this a thing. Nice. You can make it a thing because you can find out what their favorite video game is. And just like, this is great.